always seems so dumb. <laughs> Amanda's back. If you uh, listen to Amanda's first episode, it's our she... best episode so far. It's the most, it is. most, most listened to. It is. Most listened to. <laughs> really? She, she must have, have a loyal fun. following. It's not us. It's not us. Um, yeah, Amanda's back, and uh, we actually were supposed to have uh, our buddy Alejandro on, but he accidentally double booked, so he's actually in South Carolina right now. Accidentally, don't accidentally. Don't accidentally. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> He'll uh, be back. He's eager. I promise. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty sure Pat's double booked me before, but that's okay. Well, we're not about. <laughs> um, so Amanda happened to be on that email chain where he realized he double booked, and she jumped on the opportunity to come back with the boys. So, love that. Amanda, welcome back. Thank you. I love being here drinking with y'all. Oh, it's good. And it's, it's one good. of my more favorite things us. to do. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for having me. And I'm very excited to uh, do Oregon wines, like we talked me about too. last time. Uh, I'm really pumped for some Oregon Wait, was that was that part of last time? Was No, we tasted Oregon wine one day, and I kept asking oh, about Oregon, Oregon wine. Yeah. Well, and on so. like episode three or something, you're like, we're gonna have to have Amanda come and do Oregon. Yes. And I was like, oh shit, Absolutely. I just heard you say that on a podcast, so Absolutely. I guess now I really have to do it. Yeah. So, called you up. Yes, and you did. delivered. I did. I brought three uh, very avant partier style Oregon wines, so no classics here, is Good. what I'm saying. Some only, new world, new school shit. Only, yeah, some, we're gonna touch on some old styles, but we're doing fresh uh, takes on those old styles. And I, picked wines that I think are the direction that Oregon is headed, mm. not where we've been. Love that. So I wanted to stay away from... So is there Pinot? The Pinot. No, there's no Pinot. No Pinot. No Pinot cool. and no Chard. Cool. Actually. Okay. So, there's a little Pinot. Oh, is there? In the Gamay. There the is one. There is a little, little bit of... But I a love little, that, though. Yeah, a little no, bit. But no, I didn't bring a, a classic Oregon Willamette Pinot. Beautiful. Nope. Nope. I've had not at all. Those anyway, so that's fine. Yeah. Do we want to jump in? Let's yeah, go. Should we get started? It. Okay. Let's do it. All right. So, first up, this is Teutonic Wine Company. Teutonic is Barnaby and Olga Tuttle. Barnaby. Barnaby. I've always loved that name. I don't That's know right. why. It's such a great name. Barnaby and Olga. So, Barnaby and Olga are a married and couple. Olga. Olga. I know. Dude, they're like a Lord of the Rings couple. Right? What so, a name. Both of German descent, neither of them. German, but both of them are of German lineage, and both of them felt a calling and pulled towards German wines. So the story goes that Barnaby was uh, working, I believe, in a wine bar in Portland. We're in, uh, they are an urban winery, so we're in Portland. Mm -hmm. um, this was probably about, I don't know, 20 years ago. And so they're like in other divisions. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of a smaller scale, okay. but yes. So um, Barnaby was working in a wine shop and a distributor came in and brought him a whole selection, just a full bag of Mosul wines. Mm -hmm. And Barnaby was really taken by this experience. And he and Olga just sort of felt called to start learning about what it means to make German wine. So they went to Germany, they went to Mosul, they talked to and met with and learned from and worked with many, many winemakers in that region. And then they came home and they started making their own wines. So like Division, like other urban wineries, they are working very closely with farming partners, but they don't necessarily have an estate that they are farming themselves. Rather, they are um, helping care for the grapes and raise the grapes, helping harvest the grapes, and then bringing them back to their winery in downtown Portland and making their wines there. So what so we have- So you can go there and visit- Yes, absolutely. In downtown Portland. Yeah, totally. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. Is that the same for division? So yes, okay, yep, cool. absolutely. So what we have here is a wine called 1908 and you'll see, um, you guys will see that it has sort of an old school label. It's got like kind of a- um, it Looks like when the Wright brothers were drawing the Yeah, right, schematics. it's kind of a, <laughs> an old drawing that might've been like submitted for a patent or yeah. something. So the idea behind this wine is specifically that they were aiming to make what was considered to be the most famous type of wine at the turn of the 19th century. So heading into the 20th. In Germany or? It was being made in Germany, okay. but worldwide these were the wines Got that people it. wanted the most. And so it was this Mosul style, but dry. So what we have here is a Riesling Pinot Gris blend, but dry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it smells so good. I'm like, should I be the dick and what take is the that, first sip? What is that smell that I'm getting? Because it's, it's very, very like familiar and I just can't put my nose on it. I can't put my nose on it. So for me, this the Riesling 
excuse me, the Riesling shows through first, so you get all of the petrol. Okay, it like, is petrol. That's yes. what I'm thinking. Okay. I was like, I don't want to be like stereotypical yeah. and just call petrol, but it really is like. But that is the calling card of Riesling. It is. Though. It is. I know. I just right? was hoping. If you don't have that, you sort of wonder if you're drinking yeah. a Riesling. So yes, that is, is really bloating out of the glass. For is me. there a uh, specific percentage of blend? Do they disclose it or no? Oh, great question. And they probably do, but I don't recall. It's definitely more Riesling. Off the top of my head, I'd have to check the tech sheet. Well, Riesling's um, Riesling's mm -hmm. nose is always very like straightforward. Yeah, it's very aromatic. And they're very aromatic. So. It is tech. Is it technically an aromatic varietal? Like a Malbasi and all that, isn't it? I believe. I think by technicality, it is an aromatic varietal. I don't think so, yeah. but I would not want you to quote me on that. So I'm glad I just said Good. it. Good. Don't quote me on that I'm aromatic so glad varietal. Shitty. That I just said that on the podcast. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't think it is, but I actually don't know. Well, you know what they say, but you don't know won't hurt you. That's right. Or, I can be honest, I can't wait to taste this. I, taste you know, it. I smell it, it and I automatically want just a fatty fish. Yep. Like I just want some trout crudo or something. <laughs> the silence while we all drink. Dude, everyone lifted at the same exact time. That is delicious. Oh, that was perfect. My goodness. That is That's delicious. Insane. So oh, it tastes like tomato Scott, skins. if you're listening. This is delicious. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It tastes, tastes like, like tomato skins. Oh, I, oh, I can see That's that. A great like green tomato, tomato almost yeah. in a way. That's yeah, what I'm I can see that. Yep. I can like I can feel it peeling off my tongue if you speak the tomato skin. Dude, this is not a bad one. A very good way. That's insane. Well, speaking of that, it definitely has a lot of texture mm -hmm. too. Yeah, and it's lingering. The texture oh, yeah. even lingers for me. There's, I mean, there's no skin contact, nothing to actually create that texture. That's just pure, purely the fermentation of the juice itself. Mm. No lees or anything, I assume, either, right? Mm. That's not typically common with Riesling. I bet there is. There is? Okay. A little bit. Yeah, if I had to say. The texture like is coming be. from somewhere. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's, it ain't the fucking Pinot Gris. Let me tell you that. It's probably not the Pinot Gris. Is an Oregon Riesling common? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Oregon does great with these cooler climate wines. In fact, that's all that Teutonic is doing, is they model their winery after basically German-style, Mosul-style wines. So, all cool climate wines. So, they're sourcing all of their fruit from higher elevation vineyards as well. Um, and that is fairly common. I mean, there are really nice, like, higher elevation, cooler climate uh, vineyards in yeah. Oregon, for sure. You know what I like about this wine? It's right on the brink of needing food. Like it's right there where you need some food with it because it's got that texture and it's got that acidity. It's quite warm too, like the back of my throat's pretty warm. But if this was chilled like maybe a couple degrees colder, I could sit outside and crush this all day. All yeah, day. it's 70 degrees outside today in yeah. Atlanta. And if this were ice cold and we were sitting on the White Bull back patio. Oh, uh, would kill it. Right, we would well, just we would have finished this bottle already. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. I um, this has been in my bag, so it's not ice cold. I love the, this temperature for a Riesling because I think yeah. that when they're warmed up just a little, it adds extra texture. Yeah, and flavor. Yeah, and the, the flavor definitely. comes the out. The bouquet pops open more. It's, it's, it's just like, all it's around like, better. In my opinion, wine. So food, when people are like, oh, can you warm this up? I'm like, no, you don't want that to be piping hot. Yeah. If you get food piping hot, you're going to burn your mouth, can't taste anything. Yep. Same thing with wine. I feel like if it's too, too cold, you can't taste it's anything. It's too tight. It's just too tight, yeah. So. Well, there is that phrase or that saying um, that we're, hist or like sort of as a culture, we're drinking our whites too cold and our reds mm -hmm. too warm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? So we need to be taking the whites out of the fridge a little bit the earlier. Same with the oranges, too. I mean, people put them at white temperature because they think... Well, it's kind of, it's technically kind of a white wine. I'm like, no, you really should be drinking it closer to red. You got to find like that fine line of in between Solid red time. and white, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a problem, but it's just a lack of education as is with most things wine related, at least on this side of the world. So what do you think about this? Uh, I think it's phenomenal. This might be one of the highest rated wines for me that we've done on all of our episodes so far. No, my highest rated white wine was the one you brought last time, the one that Close out. Yeah, the that French, was the French yeah, one. Yeah, that yeah. was insane. Oh, yeah, yeah that was so yeah, good. That is I don't think this doesn't wines. score as high for me, but it's definitely fantastic. Oh, God, that one was so good. Fantastic. <laughs> it's definitely one of the best whites I've had in a long time. Yeah, without sure. a doubt. It's definitely one of the, and especially on the domestic level. Yeah, without for a doubt. For an American level, without, without a doubt. doubt. Yes. 
and um, Barnaby and Olga. Fucking love it. Right, I have to I just say so their excited. names because Barnaby and yeah. Olga Tuttle. Tell me better names. Right. Like you just That's cannot great. come up with a couple that have a better like couple name. That's great. Um, they are. They are. You know what? No, here's what it is. There's a lid for every pot. Yeah. That's and, true. And sometimes the lid's name is Olga yeah. to yeah. your Tuttle. Yeah. You know, like to your Barnaby. So. Um, anyhow, these guys are doing much smaller production than, say, Division, who's also the, uh, doing the urban winery thing in downtown Portland. Um, although they do make a decent amount of wine, we're still talking like probably half the amount of production of some ones that we're more familiar with, like Division. Um, Olga and Barnaby have a fantastic reputation. People in Oregon, in the wine industry in Oregon, um, really like and respect them and you guys know that i love selling wines from that are made by good people yeah. that always makes me feel better i can talk more passionately about the wines when i know that they're good folks so all of these three wines that we're tasting today are all from good folks that's awesome yeah should we go to the next one yeah what's your 8.9 okay really yeah i didn't even think about that shit eight seven I think I'm also eight seven. Yeah. I almost called it eight seven and I was like, nah, just like I'm just, eight, eight for me. just that yeah. that textural component that it had mixed with that just the opening aroma that I yeah. got, I was like, dude, that's that's gotta be above an eight seven. Yeah. Because I treated that seven as that cop out yeah, yeah, part. So I was like eight nine. Okay, we're not allowed to use sevens, I forgot. Shame on you I'm guys. Just follow, listen, I just follow the buses <laughs> lead, okay? Like eight, 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 Eight nine to me is like that number that like in one small little thing would have put it. In the oh, oh, now I'm the problem. Well, no, <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, okay. <laughs> they would have put it in the nines. They give you a nine zero. It's got to be a nine one. So I do like eight, eight seven, seven. Better, better than eight eight. There's something about yeah. it that just like is more. Eight eight's weird. Not a lot of people. I mean, it's I weird. never see eight eight. No, in yeah. a point scale. Yeah. yeah. See eighty eight when it comes to like decanter points yeah. and like wine enthusiasts, but you never see an eight point eight on a one to ten scale. This um this bottle has been intriguing to me since since you saw the, the label yeah. yeah the label and Make sure the clear bottle she for a label. uh and the color yes yeah, it's carbonic I'm gonna assume uh incorrect fuck I'm colorblind and I can sell that color <laughs> I have a lot to say about this wine um this is Larry's is the name of the winery the winemaker is Luke Wild. So Luke, actually, his very first harvesting gig was uh, for Barnaby, oh, no first really. of all. Yep. Um, and we know about Luke and his, his business partner, Meredith, because Luke was also the assistant winemaker at Division, and we represent Division, and Division is a huge part of the Avant Frontier portfolio. We love and respect Division, so when they were like, hey, you guys should check out this winery, this this person was just working for us for a few years and we really, really like him. And so we started getting interested in Luke and Meredith's wines. And so that's how we discovered them. So together they make a label called Statera. And Statera makes only Chardonnay in Oregon. And then Luke and Meredith each have their own label as well. Oh. So Meredith has a label called EST and Luke has Lari's. And Luke is a Dungeons and Dragons player and has played a lot. So played a lot. Shit today, huh? Yep, played a lot over the pandemic. So a lot of his wines have this sort of vibe, or they're they're sort of named after characters or gods or goddesses in Dungeons and Dragons. So we definitely have that vibe with this one. This wine is Tamora. And this is styled after kind of a pastacron, and a pastacron, for those who are unfamiliar, is a is a burgundy, except we're blending pinot and gamay. Looks like an acid trip. So we don't <laughs> see it that often because in burgundy, growing gamay is not where the money is. You don't make any money off of gamay in burgundy unless you're in Beaujolais, and so we don't find pastacrons um, all that often. This is also sort of mildly modeled after the same style of wine from the Loire Valley where again they use the Pinot and the Gamay but Luke is always trying to put a fresh spin on things for me Luke and Meredith are where wine in Oregon is going 
Gosh. This is this is the future of wine. They are what I consider to be a younger generation, but they're not younger. They've had this winery since 2014. Luke has been making wine for 13 years, so they they have a ton of experience, nice. but they are still what I consider to be kind of the incoming generation that's really working to push the boundaries of what wine is in Oregon. Luke likes to do things like use barrels from the previous year that like maybe he was aging a white in it the previous year well this year he'll age a red in it and then maybe uh, next year he'll age a white in it again Ooh, and, yeah, that's not more common well because a lot of people and winemakers there's a lot of anecdotal evidence but nothing really concrete or scientific evidence right. that's right. showing that like it can impart different flavors or different colors yeah. into your wine and what luke wants to do is say listen a lot of this is just kind of urban myth stuff yeah. And we don't have a lot of evidence to back it up. So Luke wants to try a bunch of different things and do things in a really sustainable way. He reuses barrels. He uses renew barrels where they are taking old barrels and basically making them new by filing them down and recharring the inside of them. He hand bottles these. Wow. So Jeez. basically using gravity and a forklift to raise up the tank and then using gravity, have the wine be bottled through like a manual bottler. Part of that was a financial decision. Luke and Meredith are self-funded. They started this winery with their own investment. They did not pay themselves for like eight years. In fact, it's just been recently that they've been able to start supporting themselves off of these wineries. They were making wines for other people on the side. Tiny, tiny amounts of wine. So a barrel, two barrels, three barrels is what we're getting for each of these. And you is notice- at least like big barrels or is it <laughs> I mean no it's no, just the it's standard cool. right we're right talking here. about like 100 cases sometimes less 40 cases right of a release so you made a note of the clear bottle clear bottles of course tell us a couple of things one they say that the wine should not be aged because we need the the coloring on the bottle to protect the wine from any of the sun or any light so immediately we know like this is a wine that Luke wants us to drink no. immediately yes. and young what he's going for are table wines that are delicious, interesting, made well, sustainable. He really goes the extra mile to try to make the most sustainable wine that he can. And just like the rest of these producers, they're buying grapes from different places. They don't necessarily have their own estate, but they're very involved in the farming in all of the the vineyards that they use. That's awesome. I feel like it's a testament to, to where that new school thought is going like it's kind of like when people take where they rent other people's homes and then put it on airbnb and make money <laughs> off that that's what like these guys are doing they're like i'm not gonna deal with owning my own land i'm actually just gonna buy the grapes and make some bomb ass juice out of it instead that's called something what's it called when somebody, somebody does that it's a name for it now in like the wine world yeah arbitrage is that right? well that's that's what people do for housing they call it my wife calls hmm. it something in the french term it's a bunch of French uh, winemakers do it too. Oh, if it's a French term, I don't know. Oh, like a negociant? That's it. Oh, negociant, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. It. Nice. So you can see, um, looking at this, it does have, you know, it's not clear. There's no real transparency to this. There is some nice cloudiness to it. You know, they're not really um, filtering these wines or finding these wines. They're not even really, like, probably racking them all of that much to get all of this sediment out. So tell me what you guys think. Dude, all I'm getting is dark cherry yeah. and, and tarragon. But I feel like to me that's Look, gamay, no? Tarragon. That's gamay, though, no? I love that. Tarragon as gamay. No, I mean gamay is oh, dark, dark cherry. Oh, like, the dark cherry. Yeah, sure. Like, if you blind yeah, yeah. taste me on this, is gamay 100%. Yeah. But I would never guess that there'd be an R in this. No, not, I mean, not based off the nose no. for sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Blue, like, I got the tarragon before I got the cherry. I had to do a couple more sniffs before I was like, oh, yeah, dark cherry. I want to also touch on the tiny, tiny bit of VA that we're getting on the nose here because I think it's really important to talk about quote unquote perceived flaws in natural wines and what they mean and how they affect the, the smell and taste. Um, I don't think that VA, especially in this sort of amount, which is so minimal, and VA is volatile acidity, so it's volatile, which means it's eventually going to sort of leave the glass, especially as you keep it open and agitated. I have found that VA can really sort of drop off with time. But VA, you know, we're in sort of a crisis in the wine industry right now in terms of flaws and 
how to mitigate that. And I think that the, this is a great wine to talk about that because there is that tiny, tiny little bit, but that does not stop this from being incredibly drinkable yeah. oh, and yeah, incredibly yeah. delicious. Yeah. And that especially in regions where we're seeing climate change really impact the vineyards more so than in other regions, we need to sort of wrap our heads around some of these things just being a little bit sort of terroir. A lot of these flaws are coming from the vineyard and that's a direct result of climate change. I don't think that the tiny bit of VA in this impacts it in the slightest for me. I never, um, it's funny you said that, because I never get um, I never get caught up in VA unless it's like incredibly it really obvious. Like punching you yeah. in the face, right? And at that point, to where like I don't even bring it up because some people might be like, oh, "There's a little VA in here," and I'm like, "So fucking what? Who cares? There's a little bit of Brent in a pet map, and that doesn't make it a bad pet map, yeah. right? You know, like oh, well, doesn't matter. Ooh, the spice I mean, on does, this. Does, yeah, I know it's kind of good in the end. The spice on like, you know what it kind of tastes like at the end? Um tastes like uh, the fucking, what's the cranberry jelly people do at Thanksgiving? Like with all your Thanksgiving spices, that's what it tastes like. When you just took it and mixed it all together, I've only had that once, it's gross, I'll never do it again. But it's good in this wine. (laughs) (laughs) I also think this wine is incredibly textural. Yeah. There's a lot of texture. I like how the tannin smacks you real quick Mm -hmm. and then just kind of dissipates. Goes away. Yeah, I like that, because at first I was like, wow, that's a lot of tannin. And then all of a sudden it was just like, peace. I was like, all right, cool. Mm. Because you could, if you needed to, and kind of goes with like the clear bottle not not that it's a a direct sign of the clear bottle but whenever i see a clear bottle i automatically know or assume that i could probably chill it a little more than a typical yep. red wine yep. and the same like those tannins at first and, and you may be like i don't know if i can chill this yep. enough to like enjoy because it's it's good enough to drink on a day like this or an 80 even 80 degrees i can push yep. it and chill it um but but then once it disappeared i was like oh yeah you could definitely chill it and just crush that wine without yep. a doubt which is what Gamay is kind of for anyways. So. Yep, my clear bottled reds are going in the fridge. Dude, that's a Thanksgiving one. Overnight until, and I take them out maybe 30 minutes before yeah. consumption. Other people like to say, put your wine, your red in the fridge 30 minutes before you want to consume it. I'm the other way. I'm like, get it ice cold. Yeah. And then let me warm it up a little yeah. and let me drink it as it continues to warm up. Because I like to see how it evolves yeah. right when it's really cold maybe like 45 or 50 degrees up into where it's room temperature in the last class in my yeah, apartment right. or whatever um i love seeing how wines evolve through temperature changes and also i like to drink a lot and so having these lower alcohol guilty right like these lower <laughs> alcohol they're just like they're made for drinking the whole bottle yeah, there is are. nothing about this that says put the cork back in no. and finish this tomorrow but that's also why their natural wines tend to be lower in alcohol yeah. You know, like I, I would say that's probably not true. I wish that were true, but I don't think that natural wines are lower in alcohol. I think that some natural wines true. definitely can be. Yeah. But there's ton I mean I often get ones that I'm like, wow, I love this. I'm like, oh 14 and a half percent. Cannot drink can't drink this. <laughs> All right, yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to put this away and hope it lasts till tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. But those are the ones you can cork and put back in the fridge and get it out and finish the rest of it tomorrow. Yeah. For me, this is a full once I open this. This is fully getting consumed. I am not yeah, stopping until yeah. this bottle is empty. What is the percentage on this one? 13? Great question. 12. So 7. also 12, 7? on wow. our first wine, the Teutonic was 11.7. Okay. It felt warmer than that. It definitely did. Right? Mm-hmm. And then what did you say this one was? 12, 7. Right? I like that. At well, the 0.7, all you ever find really is the 0.5s and the zeros. But you know, it's also helpful to remember that alcohol percentage on the bottle is likely not true. Yeah. yeah sometimes the winemaker just puts that because it's kind of what's required by law. Unless it's California Zen, then it's definitely 15.5%. <laughs> but is it or is it 16%? You oh, know yeah, what that's I true. mean? Either like way, sometimes... it's that or up because I take one sip and I start sweating. Yeah. It's also, bad. alcohol changes over time, yep. right? So these are really, I try to take the alcohol on a label and use that as just sort of a jumping off point and a guideline. I know that it's mostly going to go down over time and that I'm not likely going to go any higher. But even this, like, 12 whatever, I mean, maybe. Mm-hmm. But, like, it also could be a little lower. I don't know what his exact reasoning was for putting that. And also, 11.73, come on. Come oh, on. they went two decimal points. There's no over. way. That's There's great. just no way that that's, that's exactly great. what that is. It's a 2017. Or is that exactly <laughs> what it is because they took the time to actually go two points over? 
Perhaps at bottling, but I can't imagine that that's where we're at. at this yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. right. Maybe at bottling for sure. Yeah. yeah. So thoughts. You want me to go first? You first. Let's go. Eight three. Ooh, I was gonna do an eight two. Yeah. Then I said, "Fuck that! I'm skipping three and I'm going to eight four. Eight four. Because I'm I'm thinking if this had a slight chill on it, I would. This would be. I would just sleep with this bottle and cuddle yeah. it. Uh, I'm going. So I went eight seven for Teutonic. Eight eight. This is my. Did you say eight eight was weird? I did, <laughs> but now I feel like it's it's perfect. Nice. Because this is my style of wine. This is awesome. the kind of wine that I want to drink every day. I love this Riesling uh, blend, but that's a very specific meal for me. Mm-hmm. Timora, these table wines, all the Larry's wines. Um, what is your specific meal for that? I mean, definitely. Ooh, specific meal. Since we were talking about seafood, I can't really get that out of my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought so, fatty fish immediately. Mm-hmm. When yeah. I... Yeah. Something with like, maybe like a meteor white fish. Ooh, maybe even like a, I don't want to be like basic, but even like a, like a sear tuna mm-hmm. could be delicious. Oh, yes. yeah, but also good. like, I would honestly kill just like a bunch of shrimp yeah. with this. Yeah. <laughs> I could kill a bunch of shrimp with anything. With pretty much know. anything. Yeah. yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. I was thinking like a seared steelhead or salmon with, lentils underneath it. For some reason, I wanted lentils. Yeah, that like that. texture. Yeah. And that's acidic. What yeah. would you pair, as the chef, what would you pair with the white? <sighs> Let me show you what I would pair with the white. Wow! You know, I would this, love to made, hear. We made this dish the other day, and it was fucking phenomenal, and that's all I've been thinking about since you poured that <laughs> wine for me. Are you going to plug it? It's on your IG? Is it on your IG? Uh, I think it's on the YouTube. Oh, okay. Well, hold go. on. Let me show you the video. Oh, Mako, yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yes. Good call. Wait yes. till you see the sauce. Though. Okay. I want this already. Yeah, watch the whole fucking I already want this Sorry, so everybody. bad. Wait till you see the sauce. How dare you show me this when I'm starving? How dare you? I got cheese. Where are those? I'm going to get the cheese. I'll go get the cheese. I don't have a knife, but you're going to have to break it with your hand. Dude, dude. What the fuck? What is... <laughs> That's salmon roe and uh, Cedric caviar for how, the sauce. How dare you? I just, that, with that, I'm down. I'm ready. Where's, what menu is that? Gonna Zero. Sh- Maybe the new That was, menu. that was, that was almost rude. Yeah. <laughs> that was almost rude, Pat. Found a plate in the night. You're like, you here's this amazing dish. I hear you're starving. Also, this is not available to you anywhere. Yeah. So, Mahi Mahi with the caviar <laughs> Blanc. That's what That's I not a bad shout, That's chef. That's not bad all at right. all. So is I this found... Mimolette? No, it's just a nice English red cheddar. Oh, I was like, did you just bring my Whole favorite Foods. cheese of all time? No, but <laughs> Rachel has now tried Mimolette. And I... So Best does her cheese. cat. Ooh, so did her gonna... cat. Her cat broke into her baggins. Oh Damn. my gosh, that's hilarious. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Your cat is like, I have the nicest taste. I require oh, the I most wrapped, expensive cheese. I wrap these quite jankily, but that's... I was like, that's why you use my backpack. Oh, I don't man. remember. I gotta read cheese. It's, there we go. Honestly, this cheese right here is probably really good with that Riesling. I will say right off the rip. Yeah. Oh, we can read this. This is the uh, division. So this is division, however, this is Gamine, which is Kate Norris. So division is Tom Monroe and Kate Norris. They are currently business partners. They have been married and divorced. They've been running this winery together for 14, 15 years. Um, Do great as business partners. Both of them, uh, I believe, married to other people. There's, There's really been nothing that has stopped them from making a beautiful winery even after sort of a you know whatever happened um and so the story that kate told me and this was years ago so i could be slightly misremembering but the story that she told me is that she had been really wanting to make a style of wine that division was not really making and using some grapes that division was not sort of focused on and she wanted to make wines that her mom really liked and drank in france I believe that Kate is of French, um, like her, of lineage, but I'm not, I would need to confirm that. So Tom bought her, she showed up at the winery one day, and Tom had bought her a barrel of Grenache. They were not making Grenache, and he said, take it, make it, do it, do your thing. You've, you've been wanting to do it, do it. 
So she started with that one barrel of Grenache. So she makes a Grenache. This is a Syrah. Um, and a couple others. She makes an Aligote that will actually change your life. Okay. I thought it was Syrah. I was like, the, this is Grenache. That threw me off for a second. No, no, no. Okay. This is the Syrah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but there's a couple of other really interesting things about this wine as well. So she's working with Mays Vineyard. Mays Vineyard is run by Herb Quady. Herb is famous, famous in the wine world. Part of that is because he was Randall Graham's farming partner for Bonnie Dune. Bonnie Dune is such a historic boundary pushing winery, even though we think of them as maybe being like grocery store wines for a little bit. Bonnie Dune is actually nothing like that. Why does that sound familiar? I mean, they're just, you would just know them oh, if you okay. saw them. They've just, they've been around for I don't know, decades, since the early 80s. Oh, wow. So Randall Graham is incredibly important in domestic wine production, just in terms of what he's done and pushing the wine conversation forward. And so Herb was his farming partner and became very well known working in California for Randall Graham. Um, at some point, Herb decided, I'm gonna do my own thing, so he moved to Oregon, and now he's famous in Oregon for having some of the best highest quality fruit wow. and so you're quite lucky if you get a chance to farm with her and Tom and Kate think of her as almost being like a dad to them that's what this relationship is like they're very very involved in the vineyards and and helping with the management Kate especially with this maize vineyard and again these wines are made in a style of wine that her mom wanted to drink yeah. just from being in France it smells slightly methylated mm. Which is cool. That's not typical of Syrah ever, but could be the Oregon area doing that. Oh yeah, there's a lot happening on the nose here. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was cheese, guys. I haven't even had uh, any yet. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't ideal. I just realized I was like, you know, I'm finally gonna bring cheese today. So I didn't pick it for the podcast. I mean, the cheese is delicious. Was, I was just like, yo, I got cheese wrapped up and I can bring it. So. I want to taste this so bad. Well, sir, please lead the way. Wait, let me see the bottle because it kind of looks weird. Beautiful bottle. Wow. Yep, so these wines are ultra small production. Division in general makes small amounts of many wines, is one of the things that I love about them. Um, there's always something division in stock because they always have a release. And these, though, are once a year. We get a single drop typically. She makes a very small amount. Sometimes we get five to seven cases a year. Am I supposed to know this word? Which word? The are first you? word. Applegate. No, no, no. Oh. The? Ha. <laughs> Wait, wine? Wait, what? Vino? Vino? <laughs> what is that word? Gamine. Gamine. Okay. Yes. That's the name of her winery. Oh, shit. Of her shit. label. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like, I like the, 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 the I think following you, I think you guys are going to be Wine's mind charm. blown with my score on this when the time comes. Okay, that's... I'm expecting a high... No, I'm expecting a high score. Wait till you taste it. And you're not a red guy. No. So what do you taste that though? You're not a red guy and you're not a sparkling guy. Mm. So you only drink white wine. Mm, mm, mm. And skin contact, rosé? Mm -hmm. Both of those? I'll drink red, but I'll drink the sour. He loves Cremant just like I do now yeah. because of you. Which Cremant? I don't know, whatever you got. Uh, he don't care. He don't care. <laughs> so, do you know Richard? I like Alsace uh, as, a, as, a, as a region. Like, Alsace. Good Alsace. to know. Okay. Yeah. Goes with that seafood so well. Yeah. Do you know Richard Vargas for, from Atlanta Beverage? No. So he, he listens to our podcast, and he texts me this morning, and he goes, he just texted me out of nowhere, he goes, Cremant is French. And I was like, yeah, why are you telling me this? And he goes, I was like, wait, did I admit that I liked it on the podcast? He goes, yeah, you and Pat both. He goes, he's like, it's French. I go, I know. You know, eventually we're just going to have to admit that French wine is good, especially when it comes to sparklings. And he was like, do you guys want, he's like, Pat says he wants to do an all Cremant episode. I go, yeah. I was like, you want it? He goes, nah, I got dibs on Burgundy. Oh, <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. So we're recording with Richard Friday. It's not going to be Burgundy, but, but yeah. France, but that Cremant you for me, fantastic. makes, of course, historically beautiful wines. Mm -hmm. But I drink more French sparkling than I do really? anything else. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm like y'all. We've talked about this extensively. Yeah. I lean Italian pretty much exclusively or domestic. I think um, if I were to really look at all of the wine that I buy, it's probably split mostly down the middle, maybe a little heavier domestic, but French sparkling wine. Yeah. 
hey, those guys they know what can, they're doing exactly those they guys do. know sparkling wine yeah. like nobody else and they do it like nobody else yeah. and if you don't like any other french wines get into some cremants for sure because you get the quality of a champagne without the price tag. Yeah, champagne. that's why I loved it. That's delicious. Yeah. Oh, we had the Mont Borgo. That's what it was. It was the yeah. Jura Cremant oh that you liked God. so much. Dude, that was so good. Yeah. I don't know if you had to show it the rest of the day, but I really wanted to ask you if I could just keep the bottle, but I had shit to do anyway, so, so it's okay. It seems likely that <laughs> I so drank shy. the rest of it when I got home. It did, yeah. It's okay. All right, it's fine. No, no, you gotta go first. Gotta go you first. talked all that shit. You got, yeah. Or Amanda can go first. Uh, you, you go, go first, first. Yeah, I, yeah. Went, I went. I went first the last time. You How much oak does this see? Mm. Did you say? Or no? I didn't say. Sorry. I, I don't know. I actually don't know. I would say top probably of my anywhere from twelve to eighteen. I don't think it's at that twenty-four mark or anything. I also don't think it's at that twenty-four mark. Yeah. I. Ooh, this is fourteen percent alcohol. Yeah. See, so like natural wines don't all have to be. That glue glue. That like low glue but isn't this this does have a little bit of like a you could lug this down vibe to oh, it. You can. You gotta be you, careful. You'd be yeah. shit faced at the end. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you definitely can. This needs to be outside at the back of White Bull one night when we're grilling off lamb. Yeah, slightly colder outside. Yes. Yeah, but yes. so we can get that yep. side chill. Yeah. You know, um just kind of reviewing the tech information, next. she's actually not saying what um how right. it's being raised. Oh. Yeah. That. So hey. we're gonna have to just make some educated guesses. We're gonna tag her. She'll hopefully, tell us. hopefully yeah. she'll tell us. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm gonna give this wine. I'm gonna take one more sip before my final yeah. answer. Hang on. Oh, I took one more sip, but I wasn't thinking of a final answer. I just wanted to drink mm. it. I knew it the minute I fucking tasted it. <laughs> I know you made it. Known. The minute I tasted it, I knew what I wanted to score this. Man, this is really good. This is like a nine or nine one for me. This is definitely up. This is this is up in the nines. All right, sure. so I'll go next. So we'll, we'll save your yours. The, the big end. reveal. Yeah, the big bang. Uh, I actually am at a nine one as well. I am at exactly yeah, a nine one. I was a nine one. Fucked up. So fucked up. Yeah, the minute I said that's what like, you get for letting us go first. Yeah. The minute. Well, like, we totally we just stole your thunder. Right? Yep. The minute I taste that, like this is a nine one right now, right at nine one. It won't it, to me. It's not. It's not a 9.3 or higher. It's a 9.1 because I want to drink the fuck out of this wine right now. Yeah. Like all of it. Heartburn at all? No, I don't have any heartburn. It's weird. This also does Zero. not does not bother Zero. my very sensitive esophagus yeah. from Zero. drinking all of that aforementioned sparkling wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wait, is that a thing? I mean, I just find that carbonation is really yeah, hard on, on, like, if you have acid reflux and stuff. Oh, uh, definitely makes saying. it a lot The worse. amount of Campari and soda I drink, I am screwed. Well, the Campari helps. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. medicine. Yeah. yeah. It's medicine. It is medicine. It's yeah. 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 Um, those were fucking great. All three were fantastic. What, uh, what do these retail for? Yeah, start with the white. What, is that, what would that retail for? And who do you, if you know, if anyone has it right now that they can maybe potentially scope it out? So if it's not on the shelf at your local wine shop, anybody, any local wine shop in Atlanta or the state of Georgia could get it for you, right. really. Um, I can't think off the top of my head. Probably Elemental Spirits would have it. Yeah. Um, they love Teutonic and have put a lot of weight behind Teutonic. Three so Parks has a good amount of Oregon stuff too, right? Three Parks has an amazing domestic selection. Um, Sarah Pierre is a big proponent of French wines, but also domestic wines. Um, Teutonic is probably gonna run you around 30 bucks. I think it's worth it. Same, Timora is gonna be under 30, but like. Really? Dude, really? But like. Oh, over, like right there, maybe like 28? Yeah, like 25 yeah. to 28. Yeah. Dude, and this then, has gotta be 70, 80 bucks a bottle. I'm going with, I'm going with $53 on the shelf. Oh my God. Yeah. I love hearing all of this and I want to just like ultra confirm. Hang on. I'm so sorry. I know we're on a, and I'm like, hang on, but I just want to like make sure because these are wild guesses, you guys. Damn. Don't tell me it's cheaper. Oh, incredible. So much cheaper than what sure. you're both saying oh. right now. Yes, absolutely. Dude. Hey. Go buy this bottle. For real. Take a look at this shit one more time and go buy it. All three of them. Go buy them. All of them. Except the Alcapana. You can get that at your local, your local 
your local Walmart. Not the bottom. <laughs> oh, you can't age this, by the way. It's in a clear bottle. Yeah. So, take notes. So, gonna be running you 35 to 40 sure. for that bottle. Dude, I am well, gonna it. blow so many people's minds with that one. Well worth it. This would be great with Mimolette. I'm just saying, if we had some. <laughs> Rachel's fine. That would be mm -hmm. perfect. Can't bring it. Can't bring it. If I her agree. cat hadn't eaten at all, maybe we'd have some right? Mimolette. Which, which cat was it? Hero. Hero. The little chubby one. Mm -hmm. Of course. That explains it. That yeah. explains it. Yeah. Oh, that was great. All right. Last thoughts? You got anything to say for the peeps? I mean... <clears throat> Drink Oregon wine. Drink Oregon this wine. This Oregon wine. Yeah. Yeah, but also, you know, be aware of how climate change is impacting us domestically. We know that climate change is obviously, like, an issue worldwide, and it's, and it's having a bigger, bigger impact on some regions over others. So, for instance, some regions in Italy are harder hit, and the same is true for the United States. So, Oregon, we know, is having terrible fires. California, we know, are having terrible fires. All of this is really impacting the wine industry in these places. Same on the East Coast. The East Coast is doing great about really being forward looking and trying to work with hybrid grapes, which are a bit hardier for weather. Um, and also, like, Luke makes a white blend with with apples. So we're also looking at different kind of coconuts. You guys carry that? I do carry Dude, it. Dude, that sounds sick. It is so good. I almost brought it, but I decided on Timora. Um, it's okay, it was a good choice. But what I would say about Oregon is just keep an open mind. They get hammered every other year with just crazy fucking weather. Yeah. So in 20, or in 19 or 20, we had the terrible fires. I in never really paid attention to their weather. 21 they but had. You just think that the fires are California, like you don't but, think about Oregon. No, Oregon. no. And then they've had these heat waves. So last year they had that heat wave or two years ago where they were having 115, 116 degree weather. Think about what that's gonna do to a grape in July. Sure. Yeah. Right? Within a day. So they, I would say just always keep an open mind and also just support Oregon as much as you can because these winemakers are so salt of the earth, so wonderful. We want them to be successful. We want them to continue to make great wines. And these are all beautiful wines. They've had great vintages, but they have tough vintages just like California does. Yeah. And so I would say like, let's just keep an open mind about what wine from these regions is gonna taste like and try to be ready for some new expressions, you know, be ready for some co-ferments with fruit, be ready for some different kind of terroirs. Maybe get your head around, I don't want to say smoke taint, but maybe just like a little bit of smokiness in That's our wines. I've never those. gotten to try a smoke tainted yeah. wine yet. We got to do like an episode on that. Yeah, and you know, they're, they're trying hard not to let smoke taint into their wines, but the only way to really not is to strip the wines and right. then you don't have a natural wine anymore yeah. right so a lot of these winemakers are being faced with sort of existential questions that that really make them take a look at their whole winery and their whole just like philosophy and say how can i still make wine when all of my grapes are smoke tainted and so they're coming up with a lot of these very creative solutions. Some of them are making younger wines that are meant to be drank right away. Some of them are infusing fruit. Some of them are making more like aperitifs. We're gonna see a lot of cool aperitifs yeah, coming out of yeah. Oregon. Yeah. So I just think keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on the weather, see what's happening, but also just like continue to support them through bad vintages because these three winemakers right here, these are important winemakers yeah. in Oregon. We don't want anything to happen to any of them. And all of these folks have been making wine for at least 10 years or more. So they're so deeply part of the Oregon wine culture. And and I just, I don't know, there's, there's, I feel so invested in these winemakers and I want the most success for them. And I know that they are facing very hard times. We have no idea what this year is gonna bring. We yeah. have no idea next year is going to bring. Yeah. I mean, we're having fires in Itata in, in southern Chile. Yeah. They are, it is, climate change is affecting the wine industry in new and exciting ways yeah. every single year. And Oregon is one of those places that's really hard hit. So I would I would just want, just buy a bunch of Oregon wine. Drink Oregon Let's wine. Do it. That's, that's my takeaway. Drink I, Oregon I would, wine. I would say that like putting the apples in there or any other fruit is pretty natural. Like, you're gonna tell me thousands of years ago when people were only making natural wines, like they weren't probably putting oh, some other shit in there. Absolutely, they were putting. Yeah, they were putting oh, all kinds of fruit. A couple rose petals. Ah. They were putting <laughs> shit in there that we don't even have of anymore. Yeah, true. Yeah. You know. No, no. Yeah. So. And then they made vermouth. <laughs> so where are y'all? Inter I know you gotta run, but like where? 
from where we were a year ago where you guys were just like domestic wine not for us oh domestic wine's for me <laughs> i am on an oregon kick right now okay yeah i I've definitely, i want more oregon wine i love it i've seen i feel like i've been watching you sort of be like oh okay like this is not exactly what i thought it yes. was yeah it's i actually want to buy some oregon wine soon from you yeah very soon Let's do it. Yes. I would love to sell you some Oregon yes. wines. So the, the, the more Oregon wines that you have, in, even if you just have in your bag and you're like, Pat, where are you right now? I'll meet you anywhere just to taste the wine. Okay, let's do it. Wait, wait, that, she does that to me. <laughs> Call me. No, that's that's it. Rendezvous here that's in it. the room. A little, a little impromptu, wine, impromptu podcast. Wine tasting. I love it. Um, I can't top what she just did. No. So just I'm say, just going to say, more drink more juice, especially the Oregon stuff, obviously, because that's what the podcast this episode's about and then also don't be afraid to grab that clear bottle no. don't sleep on the no, reds in the clear it. bottle I love don't that. think it's some childish juice don't think it has it lacks depth or complexity just because it's not in a fancy pinot bottle or in a fancy you know riesling bottle nice and tall and slim like go out there seek out a clear bottle whether it's a liter with a crown cap whether it's just a regular old cork in a clear bottle with some acid trippy dungeons and dragons art Seek it out. Try it. There is an Oregon wine for everyone, there really including is. the Dungeons and Dragons player, right? Like there is literally a wine for everyone in Oregon. So I imagine off of like one and a half, two glasses on an empty stomach, Dungeons and Dragons is probably pretty fun. <laughs> we'll get the cheers on. I was gonna say, can yeah. we cheers? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, who poured me? What is this? Sarah? Thanks yeah. for cheers. having me. Thank you. Salute. Thank you. Salute. Thank you guys. Next week, guys. Have a good one.